Well, praise God. Let's go to John chapter 17. The book of John 7, chapter 17. Also, um, I wanted to remind you, and I know you've had it on the bulletin for a couple of uh, weeks, but um, today at 4 o'clock is our all-church business meeting. So we will be here at 4. Partners, you want to be here. If you're not a partner, you can still attend the meeting. If we need to vote on anything, of course, that's the privilege of the partners. And so we'll, cur- we'll carry the business accordingly. But we will attempt to be done in an hour. So there's not too much that needs to be discussed unless questions arise. Um, and so, but it's, a, <clears throat> it's our yearly meeting that we haven't had in about a year and four months. And that was all intentional. We'll tell you a little bit more about it later today. John chapter 17, verse 13, part of Jesus' prayer. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may be, they may have joy fulfilled in them. This is Jesus praying to the Father. That uh, that they spoke, he spoke into the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Jesus prayed that we have his joy fulfilled in our lives. Even Jesus prayed, Mark made the reference earlier, how we need to be reminded of the joy of the Lord in our lives. And here is even Jesus praying for his disciples, including us, that his joy be fulfilled in our lives. Romans 14, 17 puts it this way. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Verse 18 says this, whoever thus serves Christ in this manner is acceptable to God and approved by men. I want to read to you the same passage Romans 17 through 18 from the Amplified Version. It says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking what one likes, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For the one who serves Christ in this way, recognizing that food choice is secondary, is acceptable to God and is approved by men, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of drinking and eating what one likes, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The thought of today or the title of the message is that we may be joyful in Christ. Joyful in Christ. A parishioner, and during his parting from the church and even from this world as a matter of fact he told this pastor some words that were rather penetrating and he says simply this whatever you do don't miss the joy whatever you do don't miss the joy Robert Louis Stevenson at life's end he says to miss the joy is to miss everything there are some things some people have grasped that is actually very, very uh, interesting, very impactful, to say the least. You know, a king observer of Christians, he once said as he is observing and studying Christianity, he said this, he said, Christians seem to have a religion that makes them miserable. They're like people with a headache. They don't want to get rid of their heads, but it keeps hurting them. That's quite a thought. Truthfully, there are Christians that appear to be have, instead of having a regular baptism in water, they were, seem to be baptized in pickle juice, right? Not sure why. I know life is tough, but God is good. Jesus truthfully did not come to give us a miserable lifestyle, but to give us joy because he knew that joy is possible. In fact, joy is already in each one of us. 
John 5, 11, he said, These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Verse 11 says, The gift of joy is the legacy of the Lord. So in our text, we find that Jesus is praying to the Father that we may have joy, that his joy is fulfilled in us. That's interesting to me that Jesus had to pray that prayer. He could have prayed a lot of things, and he did, but to pray that, to cover that in prayer, asking the Father that his bride be filled with joy. That simply alludes to me that there would be situations and circumstances in life that were going to mess with our joy. And it is possible to then lose the joy of the Lord. Life has a way of throwing stuff at us that can rob us of our joy. For sure, it robs us of our happiness. But we know that happiness comes from happenings, which means happiness is temporary. But joy comes from the Lord, not from things. So we can still be going through difficult times and still enjoy everyday life. We can still go through difficult testing, trial, trying times and still experience and live in the joy of the Lord. We don't have, we, just because I may not be happy for a moment, I may not be happy that the car broke down, I may not be happy that, that, that you know, somebody got sick or that I am sick or anything like that. Of course, that's, nobody's happy with that. You gotta be weird to be happy that your car broke down. Woo-hoo, couldn't wait. I mean, that's weird. At the same time, do I need to allow the, the breakingness of the car to steal my joy? Does it have that much power? That's powerful in itself, that thought right there. The word for joy in the Greek word, in the, in the Greek is the word kara. Kara, which means cheerfulness, like calm delight. And it also said, it also is a word that means thrive in God or to thrive in God. So if I have no joy, I cannot thrive in God. If I live miserable every day or most of the time, or depressed, or discouraged, or disappointed, those are actually antonyms for joy. Then I won't be able to continue to thrive in God because as I mentioned earlier, when we are experiencing discouragement, disappointments, depression, and all of that kind of stuff, it really doesn't make or leave room for a joyful time in the word of God. In fact, if we are committed to getting in the word every day for 5, 10, 15 minutes, forget an hour, forget a half hour, forget 20 minutes, who has that time? I'm just trying to mess with somebody. But anyways, there is no room for it because if I'm committed, I may still do it but have and find nothing in it. I can be reading about the prayer of Jesus in John 17. I could be praying, uh, reading about uh, the book of James, what's going on in Romans and my in Ephesians, my, my newfound faith and all this victory in Christ. And it is just as boring as reading the Beatitudes. I mean, not the Beatitudes, uh, the genealogies. I mean, there's just really no, like, go to Leviticus and start reading all these things in the beginning, and you're like, da, 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 da. And if you don't feel too guilty, you skip over all that. And you get to the meat and potatoes, right? I mean, come on, it's true. So, so when we are, so the enemy knows that that's how humans function. It's part of the human race. It's part of our human character, our human makeup. And so when we are, when we're being hit hard, it doesn't feel good. It, it steals our happiness, but it doesn't steal our joy. So it is a choice of mine to allow the enemy to steal my joy. And so the, the Hebrew word, word for, for joy is the word samach. Somebody say samach. Come on, it's, it's like you almost want to spit, right? Samach. Which speaks of cheerfulness. 
to be made glad. And to cause to make glad. In other words, joy is infectious. I should say contagious. Joy is very contagious like the flu. Joy is more powerful than COVID. If you don't want people to get your joy, start wearing a mask. <laughs> Masquerade yourself. Come on, somebody. Work, work with me. Right? And so, but if you want people to get some of your joy, take the mask off and be yourself full of the joy of the Lord. Then Jesus said that my joy be fulfilled in them. The word to fulfill is the word plero. Plero simply means to be fully and completely filled. Fully and completely filled. It means to cram, to level up. In other words, is to when you're, when you're filling up a container with something kind of soft. You just press it in like a suitcase. Y'all need to come to my house when we're preparing to go on a trip. You got to see my wife pack up a suitcase. Listen, I am telling you, I am telling you, that suitcase is full, and if she could, she put me in the suitcase. Anything will fit. I've asked her, dear, can you fit this in there? And she's like, oh, sure, it'll fit. And the suitcase is, you know, doing, you know, like the buttons, you know, it's just like ready to pop. And I'm like, there is no way. And she's like, oh, yeah, it'll fit. And it fits. I mean, she opens it up. And about the time she just opens, unzips the thing, it goes poop all in itself. And it opens up because it's packed. And then she manages to put the whatever it is. And then she used to, she's even done this, sat on it. And then starts to zip it. And I'm like, she's going to break the suitcase. It still makes it there, and we still come back. That's to completely fill, to stop. That is to fulfill. So Jesus is talking that our joy is so stuffed, be so stuffed in us, that every time we open our mouths or every time we're dealing with stuff, that we don't have to be dealing with it grudgingly or depressed or upset or aggravated or losing our joy because stuff is happening around us, but rather that when we open up what comes out, it was already in there, which is the joy of the Lord. Joy is the birthright of a child of God. Joy is the birthright of a child of God. Every child of God ought to have conscience joy. Every child of God ought to have conspicuous joy. Every child of God ought to have continuous joy. Making it easy, giving you the C. And every child of God ought to have contagious joy. Conscious, con conspicuous, continuous, and contagious. Joy is the birthmark of a child of God. So when you ever have a, one of those birthmarks that are easily seen, and, and, and some people that are so big, they try to cover it with a shirt or a long sleeve or whatever, but it's just there, and then you raise your hand to worship the Lord, and there it shows. You know, it, it's a birthmark. It puts a stamp. It says something about you. The joy of the Lord is that way. It's a birthmark. What is it that people see when they see me? Do they see joy or do they see misery? The opposite of joy, like I said, is sadness, depression, melancholy, misery, sorrow, discouragement, and happiness. Because happiness is trying to masquerade joy. Happiness simply comes from happenings. It's temporary things. You know, I'll give you an example of happiness. I don't know if I have it. If I have it here, it'll come up. It's in my notes somewhere. <clears throat> but the, truthful, the truth is that, for example, happiness, here's a good example of happiness. Joy says, when I am sick, I'm still joy, and I'm praying for God's faithfulness and, and, and manifestation of healing. And I will not allow the sickness to steal my joy. Are you with me? But when I get the manifestation of my healing, I'm happy. Because, yeah, it's finally gone. 
But tomorrow's a new day. Because tomorrow now I'm dealing with a backache. Because I was so happy that I got healed that I picked up a box the wrong way. And now I get up in the morning and it's like, oh, God. I mean, I just got healed. Really? Happiness is no longer there now. But the joy of the Lord is still there. It's up to me if I'm going to live with it. So if you're not living a life of joy, you're living beneath your privileges as a Christian. And your choice to be joyless is the willingness to hand over to Satan what he's trying to rob you of. The birthright to be joyful. You have the power to live in joy. You have the authority to walk in joy. As my wife was saying, sometimes we need to speak to our soul, my mind, my will, my emotions. You live, you have the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength, so you might as well be happy about it. <laughs> you might as well act like it. You might as well live like it. You might as well enjoy your everyday life. Yeah, life is having it. It's difficult. It's not fun to pay four or five dollars a gallon of gas. It's not fun to pay five bucks for milk. Is milk five bucks yet? We don't buy gallons of milk, so I don't know. Is it five bucks yet? No, cows are still eating cheap. Um, so, you know, it, you know, it's just the stuff is going up. I mean, you'll find out today in the meeting, you know, what some of what the cost of things that we had plans, we had already a bid and things, we knew how much approximately we were going to spend on this construction, but it just so happened that during this COVID season, everything has gone up. Even the contractors, and it's like our prices aren't going up, but gas prices are. So we have to make adjustments because we got to take all this garbage and dump it out there, and everybody's charging us more. So somebody's got to pay the price for it. Guess who did that? Me and you. <laughs> so it just happened. And did I lose my joy over that? No. We just said, well, thank God that they're treating us well to begin with. And we moved on, right? It's important that you have joy to live strong, to win the lost, and to live and demonstrate the kingdom lifestyle. If you want people to believe in your Savior, the mark of the authenticity of Christ in your life is the joy of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is difficult to believe and want to accept a message and a reality from someone who's miserable about it. Right? If, you, if you're trying to tell me that, God, that, that your company is hiring and they're paying great money for it, but you hate your company, you hate your boss, and you cannot stand the product, why would I want to work there? It's difficult. And they fire people all the time just when the boss gets mad. If you give me all of that, I am not going to work there. I don't care. They pay me 50 bucks an hour. Because getting a job is not about making money. I know for most Americans it is. Getting a job is actually a place to fulfill your purpose. You are giving employment in order to God. God makes room for you to exercise your purposes, exercise your skills, exercise your talents, and make an impact and bring Jesus into the environment that he has provided for you. I'm not saying at the same time that you should get a job making three, not paying $3 an hour. That would be ludicrous too. But at the same time, it isn't about making money. Building a business is not all about making money. If you hate the business you're building, you're in the wrong career. Come on, somebody. I don't know why I'm talking about that, but you know, I'm just following the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> and I know that there are seasons where we do things we don't like. There is a time that we need to transition from one thing to another, but it isn't where we're pitching our tent. Years ago, my wife and I decided that we were going to pitch our tent in a certain part of this world. And we built a beautiful home. And we had a business that I enjoyed. And we had a ministry. 
and life was good and we were having and we had kids and we were done having kids after four the joy of the Lord comes upon you when you say we're done <laughs> I'm kidding well there's a truth to that but anyways that's a different story but 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 then so then we're in just a few years later we said I remember telling my wife we're still not done this is not where we're staying we're not retiring from here so you know it wasn't a fun moment because my wife was hoping to hear from me we can we can uh, 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 dig or in, in, in build deep roots and stay here my wife is was tired of traveling and moving so much being the daughter of an evangelist and being a daughter of an evangelist who became a pastor two or three different times, going to 11 different schools and all of that, you can never establish good relationships. It was time. <clears throat> so that wasn't good news. But my wife, being the good trooper that she is, she tells me, I am not moving again. I'm kidding, she didn't say that. I was just hoping that was a joke and it went over really bad. <laughs> and that was not a dad joke either. <laughs> that would have gone over well, right? Come on. Um, but instead, it's like, okay, so we pray. Where are we going? I said, I don't know. Eventually, we wound up in some place in Ohio by Cleveland. <laughs> and here we are. And here is where we know we're going to retire from. Or we're going to die at. I don't know what retirement looks like, nor do I want to know, because that preacher never really get retires. But you know, the point of it is, is that when there is no stability, our, 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 our house was not the place to fulfill everything. It was simply to develop and exercise our purpose for the time being, but it wasn't everything God had for us, only to take us to a whole nother dimension, a whole nother place, a completely strange land where it was too cold. And they still get snow in April. So, so, you know, sometimes, yeah, we do things that we may not enjoy. I had for 15 years, 6, 17 years, a gravel driveway. My car was never clean. Man, some of you guys know how hard. I mean, that's just hard wrenching. I like my cars clean. So when you step into outside, we had a nice walkway that I created only to step into the gravel. And if it had rained too much, it washed some of the gravel away because we had a little bit of a slant. And then my kids that were so wise, they, they would step in the mud and then get in the car. And it was only by God's grace that they still made it to adulthood. It was, man, it was frustrating. There was no joy. Every time I got in the car and I see dirt is dusty, and if I washed it and I drive only a half a mile, the entire back of the van, you couldn't see anything because it was all full of dust because the whole road was gravel. Am I painting a bad, I mean, it sounds really bad. Some of you are like, dude, this is the way I like to live. It's like, okay, well, more power to you. I don't. I'm enjoying my concrete driveway. I'm enjoying my concrete, well, I like asphalt roads, but that's different. But I like my car lasting until I wash it and then it rains and I'm still trying to figure out how to negotiate with God to, you know, stop that. <laughs> so sometimes life can be frustrating, but at the same time, I remember the times that I would get in the van and we go out to church and everything and I see mud or we're going somewhere else and, and there's mud, there's dirt, there's dust and everything and we still have fun in the van as a family. And it was crazy fun. And the kids would get all wound up and the van would start doing this thing on the highway. It's like, I oh, settle down and they were just too happy singing VeggieTales songs. 
You should ask both of them today. They're sitting up there. You just said, just grab them in the back and tell them, sing me some of those Veggie Tail songs. <laughs> Joe's like, no. <laughs> so, so here's the deal, though. Here's the deal. Do we need to allow the things and circumstances in life to rob us of our joy? No. Sure, a happiness won't be there at the moment, but joy is still embedded in my spirit, in my soul. It's full with the joy of the Lord, and it's got to come out somewhere. I cannot allow to the, for the things of life and the temper temporary things of life to actually cause me to make a decision just so that I'm happy. But I know that when I make the right decision, the peace of God is already there and joy is ever present. It's about following and obeying God the way he's leading our steps in every decision, carefully considering the steps that the Lord has been ordering for us so that when we make the right decision, we can actually continue to operate in the joy of the Lord. Because even when we make the right decisions and choices, there will be some potholes that we will encounter. Every once in a while on our road, you may find a pothole you didn't like that and you didn't like in the first place it doesn't mean that I have to go over it all the time but it's going to slow me down some are you with me and so just because there are potholes in our journey doesn't mean that I have to give up my joy because my joy is not only for me, it's also for my wife, it's also for my kids, it's also, it's also for my church, it's also for my neighbor Joy, a fruit of the Spirit, needs to be there for others to partake of, partake of because that's how they will see Jesus in me. Joy is a good thing. Philippians 4, we're familiar with this scripture. Paul said, rejoice in the Lord Every so often, always, look at you, Bible smart people, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say what? Rejoice. rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all, for the Lord is near. Do not be anxious for anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. It's hard to thank God for stuff when there's no joy. It's like, really, God, I got nothing to thank you. Really? Oh, like my wife says, start counting your blessings. Go back. For the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally. Somebody say finally. That's when I'm closing. <laughs> Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if there is any excellence and praiseworthy, think about such things. Because the enemy knows that wherever we focus, we will, we will, we will uh, emphasize joy from. I'm going to ask the worship team to come back. I don't know where Bob, there is Bob. We're going to sing that song that we sang earlier today because there's joy in the house of the Lord. I am, I mean, you have got to be like a bully with the enemy. You can't, he cannot have joy. You know, he lost his joy a long time ago. Pride cost him his joy. Pride cost the enemy his joy. Can you imagine being in heaven with all the angels of heaven leading and, and doing music comes out of you? I mean, you are the angel of music. And you have music constantly. You're constantly praising. You're constantly worshiping. You're in a perfect place. And joy is for, and you don't even know what misery is. You have no idea what that looks like. But pride entered the heart. And he wanted to be like God. And he wanted to take over God's authority and power. And pride robbed him of his joy. He will no longer, forever, 
for throughout eternity will never be able to experience joy. And so he figures if he cannot have joy, you won't either. So he tries everything he can to rob us of our joy. So we have to be a bully back and say, devil, you ain't taking my joy. Because the joy is mine, is my birthright.